Good morning, church, and welcome to our online service this morning of this long labor weekend. Long and labor being the operative words of, of life at the moment, right? Uh, the lockdown has certainly been long and laborious at times. So I'd like to start us off with a prayer this morning, a short prayer, a one-line prayer to be exact. It's from a wee prayer book that I read daily um, called Prayer Volume 1 by Strawn, Strawn Coleman. Sorry, the writing's backwards there. Um, and I'll share some thoughts from Strawn afterwards. The prayer is entitled Mortgage Breaker. Lord, you unravel all my burdens. You take away my heaviness for no fee at all, but for the debt to rest. Amen. Strawn says, this prayer could just easily say, you meet me in my heaviness, because God is the God of meeting us in the dark moments. But sometimes we need to remind ourselves that he is also a healer. He can and does take away the heaviness. He overwhelms the darkness with light. God is God, after all. It can be easy to give in to one extreme or the other. One side believes that God always heals, and the other says he'd rather teach us in our suffering. But God is a person, not a doctrine, and so he meets us all differently and in different ways within different seasons of our lives. Whether God is meeting us in our heaviness or whether he's taking it away, one thing is for certain. His intention is to love us and invite us into rest. It's not escapism to tell one another that things can and will change and that God wants that for us. That's called hope. One of my beautiful home group ladies shared with us the power of hope this week. She said, hope redefines the improbable. It opens the door for the impossible. You know, I think it's easy to feel discouraged, exhausted and overwhelmed in the season of lockdown and to begin to idolise normality, to spend so much time ruining the situation and looking forward to when things get back to normal that we can lose sight of the hope that we have, that we can miss the blessings of God and of the opportunities to live for him and serve him right now. There's a really cool song that I heard on the radio not long ago with some quite challenging lyrics um, by Casting Crowns. It's called Start Right Here and it says, We want our coffee in the lobby. We watch our worship on a screen. We got a rock star preacher who won't wake us from our dreams. We want our blessings in our pocket. We keep our missions overseas. But for the hurting in our city, would we even cross the street? But we want to see the heart set free and the tyrants kneel, the walls fall down and our land be healed. But church, if we want to see the change in the world out there, it's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. We are the people who are called by his name. If we'll surrender our, all our pride and turn from our ways, he will hear from heaven and forgive our sin. He will heal our land, but it starts right here. Today, Chris and Becky, our rock star preachers, truly, are going to be sharing our GPC vision for the next year ahead of the AGM later this morning. And what we can do right now to serve our incredible God even within lockdown, as we live out the hope we profess in Jesus. So to our notices, firstly, in line with this, we will be holding our community care day as soon as we are able, when we'll be um, going out and doing some tasks for people in the community who aren't able to do them themselves. Um, a sign-up sheet was circulated by email on the 10th of October. So if you haven't already, please find this and sign up. Or if you can't find it, just let Shireen in the office know. Um, secondly, as I mentioned, the AGM. This is at 11.30 today via Zoom. Uh, voting is only for members and associate members, but anyone is free to, um, to join us. Um, discussion will be quite limited just because of the uh, difficulty in moderating the online forum. And we've actually all, um, as you know, had opportunity to submit questions and concerns ahead of time. So hopefully it will be quite quick. Uh, lastly, it is our sad news to announce that James is 
has resigned and will leave us at the end of the year to uh, teach full time in Wellington. So we've enjoyed getting to know James over the last year and really appreciate um, all the time he spent uh, with our youth, having fun with them and deepening their faith. And we really wish him all the best. Thank you, James. We will begin advertising for James's replacement soon after consultation with the youth and their families. But what this emphasize, emphasizes is the reality that youth workers have an average tenure of one to three years in a youth role in a church. So we really need to look elsewhere for the uh, stability and consistency our young people need as they walk with Jesus through their teenage years and further. So we are wanting you um, all to pray about whether you are able to help provide this stability for our youth. We're seeking uh, two people who God is calling from our congregation to invest in our young people. Uh, while the youth worker can provide organisation, admin and teaching for our young people, um, we would love two others to support this and um, invest into the relationships with them and their families. Um, please prayerfully consider um, if God is calling you to this and let Chris and Becky know if so. In every season, however long and laborious or short and sweet, within our circumstances, there are moments of sadness, of frustration, of stress and doubt, but also of joy and excitement and hope. And through it all, in it all, around it all and over it all is a mighty, mighty God and the opportunity for us to daily praise him with the whole of our lives. So let's worship together this morning. Let's start right here, right now. Good morning, church. My name is Brad and I'm going to be leading us in our intercessory prayers this morning. Before I begin, I just wanted to pray from Philippians 4, verses 6 to 8. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day, uh, regardless of the weather, mood or circumstances. We can come to you in joy, for our joy comes not from our situation or our satisfaction, but in knowing you and being assured of our salvation and our relationship with our loving God. Lord, this morning we want to lift up our church. Uh, we want to lift up those who are ill, who are suffering, who are worried. Lord, we know that in COVID times we struggle because we don't have the community that we enjoy so much, the chance to worship together, to give one another a hug. And we know that is a challenging time. Uh, we know that the finances of our church suffer. We know that relationships suffer. And Lord, we pray that you would give us your grace and peace as we navigate these challenging pandemic times. Lord, we pray for our city, for Tamaki Makoro, for the frustration and fragmentation that we see as people uh, suffer through the enduring lockdown. Lord, we pray that you will help our people to be compliant, uh, that you'll help the vaccine roll out to go smoothly and swiftly. And Lord, we pray that your blessing on the city as it starts to creak at the seams with the challenges and the difficulties of being locked down for so long. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for your protection uh, for all of our people here in New Zealand. Uh, we thank you for the opportunities we have here. We thank you that you, we have been spared COVID this, this long, but we pray that going forward, you will continue to protect us and look after us. We pray for wisdom uh, for our government as they make the difficult decisions in what is often feels like a no-win situation. We pray that you are with them. We pray that you guide them. And Lord, we, we acknowledge that you have placed elected officials in their positions, but you remain sovereign over all. Uh, Lord, we pray that ultimately you may be once again acknowledged as sovereign in this nation. 
We pray for businesses who are struggling in this time and the stress that that causes people. We pray for the livelihood of people across this nation. And most of all, we pray for health, both physical and mental, uh, and for relationships between people and within families and within friends, neighbors, and others. Lord, we pray for our world, for healing and protection from this pandemic. Uh, Lord, we, we anguish at the inequity where some people, depending on where they are born, have access to great medical care or no medical care at all. And we are reminded that, Lord, all are created in your image. All are as important as one another to you. So, Lord, we pray that the people, in, particularly in places that are hardest hit by COVID and have the least access to medical care, we pray, Lord, that you will um, be in those situations and, and where, uh, that you will prompt your people, us and the church around the world, where we can do more to ensure that, that no one is left behind, Lord. And most of all, we pray, Lord, that your word continues to sweep through this world and that more and more will turn to you. Lord, we pray that as people emerge from this pandemic, and we do pray for it to end swiftly, but we pray that the lessons learned and people's renewed knowledge of the precariousness of their earthly lives doesn't simply trigger them to buy more, to do that trip of a lifetime that they'd always dreamed of, but Lord, to reevaluate their eternal existence and their faith choices. Ultimately, Lord, we want to see more and more people turning to you and living for you. Finally, as we look at our own frustrations and the often unseen burdens of, of life, we pray that we may sense your peace deeply and in renewed ways this day and in the week ahead. And Lord, we ask these things in your holy name. Amen.
Kia ora whanau. Today's a little bit different because I'm going to spend the sermon time, well Chris and I, uh, laying the foundations for our vision uh, through scripture and then we're going to be talking about what that vision looks like for next year and how you can be involved. So I'd like to start today by reading two sections of scripture, first from Romans and one from John. Romans 13, 11 to 14 says, And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. In John 4, 34 to 36, Jesus says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes, look at the fields, they are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps will draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Both of these passages of scripture complement what we're talking about in our sermon series, Steadfast in the Storm, as we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount. But the thing that really struck me when God put these on my heart was the urgency. The urgency to sort ourselves out, to act like people of the light, and also the urgency to get out there and to reap the harvest, to share our faith, to get more and more people coming into the kingdom of God because the time is short and our mission is urgent. At the church that Chris did his curacy, and I was there for part of it as well, they had this beautiful sign up by the door. So this is St. Mark's um, in Rumuera, if you've ever been there, the beautiful old white Anglican church just up from uh, Broadway. And it had this sign in wood, and it simply said, you are now entering the mission field. And I loved the sign. It was a real tangible reminder that we come to church to learn, to be refreshed, to be equipped. And when we go back out there, out of our church building and into our community, that is the mission field. As soon as we step out that doors, there are opportunities awaiting for us to share our faith and to do the business of the kingdom. So when I think about mission and what we want to accomplish in this coming year, Jesus' commandments to us, we might say to ourselves, as I often hear and often say in my own head, well, we'll get to that later, or it's too hard, I'm not equipped enough, I'm not good enough to do this, or I'm too busy, it's just not the right time. Putting it off for another day and assuming we have loads of time is exactly what these verses are saying we don't have. And in the day, as we heard, people had a saying, they would put things off, but Jesus pushed back on that. He didn't say, oh, okay, yep, life's hard. He said, no, you need to get onto this now. He says, open your eyes. The time is now. Get out. Start reaping. Start sharing your faith with people. Start inviting them to listen to what I'm doing. Invite them to repent, to be healed, to come to me. He says the same to us. He says, don't put it off. Don't give me those age-old excuses. I want to see you get out there and follow my commands. Get out there and be effective in my kingdom. We are kingdom people and Jesus is wanting us to get out there and to really be who we're meant to be, sharing our faith, bringing more people into the kingdom. Jesus loves everyone, not just us. He wants us to get out there and bring those that he loves to be saved for all of eternity in his kingdom. The work we do, as he says, 
has eternal rewards. Now, I know some people feel uncomfortable when Chris and I talk like this, and you may be feeling like that right now. You might be feeling ashamed, convicted, defensive. Well, that's great because it means that we're putting you on the spot and God is wanting you to be in that place because God is always wanting you to make a choice, to make a decision, to follow his will, not our own human wills. In this choice, it's easy to make a decision to not follow Jesus. It's easy to make excuses and keep life the way it is. Many Christians will come to church and we will still not follow Jesus' commands. And that sentence says it all, not following Jesus' commands is not following Jesus. Uh, and that's something that we really need to take a good look at ourselves and make sure that we are following Jesus, that we have a will to do what God wants, that we're not putting ourselves and our needs and desires above those of the kingdom. The great news is that if we choose to follow Jesus and we choose to follow through on that, and it will mean sacrifice and it can be hard, but it's also awesome and rewarding and exciting. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. You get huge rewards for huge sacrifice. Now, Chris and I are not here to sugarcoat it for you, to never challenge you, to never hold you accountable, to take the easy road. That's the easy way that we could choose to do things. I mean, who wants to invite conflict or negativity or pushback? Nobody wants that. But if we went along and just said, yep, just turn up here on a Sunday, listen to what we have to say, and then go home and do things the way you want, never confronting you, never pushing you, then we would be doing a terrible job and we would be bad ministers, paving the nice, comfortable way to hell for you. And that is not what we are going to be about in our ministry. We want to keep pushing you forward. We want to equip you and inspire you. We want to empower you. We want to be with you and we want to be doing that same work in our lives alongside you. We are all in this together. So when we challenge you, we are always challenging ourselves. I always say when I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself first and then to the rest of you guys because it's not an easy thing to do and none of us are perfect. But together, we are something beautiful. We are the body of Christ and Christ wants us to really embrace our calling, to follow his commands all through scripture, all through the Old Testament. People delight in God's commands. People follow God's commands. We want to be people of scripture. We want to be people who follow and don't fall away, who make hard decisions that are good decisions, not easy, wrong decisions, if you know what I mean. So the thing is, that came to my mind when I was writing this is a lot of people may say it's easy. I already follow Jesus. I'm here, aren't I? But that's the thing. We follow Jesus with our mouths and sometimes we convince ourselves with our minds, but it's the following through that really matters. It's the follow through. So we can say that we've made a decision and that was easy, but following through on that decision is what we need to work on. And I think that's the case for a lot of us is that we need to really take seriously our relationship with God. We need to follow through on it. A lot of us have this kind of security blanket of our relationship with God, but we don't actually give it the time or priority that it deserves and it requires for us to be true followers. And I don't want to beat you up about that this morning. I just want to bring it to your attention because it's something that happens to all of us. We sort of feel like, oh, yep, God's always there. I'll get on to really focusing on that in the future, when I've got more time, when it's more convenient. But those things are just drawing us away. We want to be true followers on the narrow road, putting in the sacrifice and the effort and reaping our rewards. So step out of faith. If you're too busy, reduce your hours. If you aren't equipped, come to Chris and I and tell us about it and we'll help you. You need prayer? Come to the elders or to any small group leader and they would be just more than happy to do that for you and walk with you. If you need to work on yourself to be a model Christian and feel good enough to share your faith, well, get in line, buddy, because that's how we all feel. 
none of us are perfect. And I think the closer we draw to God, the more we see how unperfect we are. There's never a right spiritual time for you to step out in faith and start sharing your faith and getting serious about bringing more people into the kingdom. We don't have to be perfect. True evangelism is actually putting in the time and effort to have a relationship, to listen, to share when it's appropriate, to invite those people through what we say and do into a relationship with Jesus. Help them to see the truth of the gospel. That is true evangelism. And you, all of you, everyone listening right now, can do this right now as you are. You are good enough. And you are someone that God wants to use. And quite frankly, only you can reach the people that God has put in your life. He has great plans for you. And he's put those good works there for you to do. You just need to figure out who and what they are and get on board. I believe that God is at work in our community, that the Holy Spirit is moving. And if you believe that too, then the harvest is right in front of us. So let's make a real commitment as a church. It's a great time with our AGM to go put a, a line in the ground, stake in the ground, whatever you want to put in the ground <laughs> uh, and decide. I am going to be all in. I am going to follow through no matter what it takes. I'm going to make some hard decisions, some sacrifices. But do you know what? It is going to reap many, many benefits. But you need to do it together as a community. And so what I want to do now is I don't want to just leave you with a kind of motivational speech coming from scripture. I want you to have it. Get out your phone right now or your email, whatever. Give me a text. Say your name and just say yes. I'm all in. And that way Chris and I will know who to pray for specifically, uh, that we can pray into that and support you. And if you need anything, you can always come and talk to us. We want, we are here as ministers to equip you, to empower you, to support you and walk with you and pray for you. And we feel like that there's so much more opportunity that's not being taken at GPC to use us to help you along the way. So please do. It will make our day. It is not going to burden us. It will be a delight um, if you come to us and talk to us about sorting out your own issues in your life. That, As we heard in that verse, bringing things into the light and not acting like it's night. Um, or sharing your faith. Both of those things we are passionate about. And that is what God has sent us to GPC to talk to you guys about and journey with you about. So if God is speaking... Send that text right now. Do something. In church, we'd ask for an altar call, but obviously we can't do that. So please reach out. Make that commitment. If you reach out, it's the first step and we can help you follow through. If you just think it, it just gets put to the back of your to-do list and you won't think about it again, I guarantee you. So let's stop at this point. I think it's a great point while you're texting away to pray. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for the words you have spoken to us this morning. I thank you for the reminder of the urgency we have in our mission. And Lord, that need to follow you closely and to follow through on following you. God, we ask that you empower us and equip us, that you give us the strength and the courage to step out and that you help us to do this together, that no one will feel alone. No one has to feel scared or fearful. Everybody can feel that they are somewhere on this journey, no matter how far along, but we are all in it together, holding hands, walking forward. No one is left behind to do this by themselves. So God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will impassion us, will move us today, convict us uh, to do more for you, to be Jesus to our community, to show your love, God, to everybody that we meet and to take practical steps to go further and invite people into your kingdom. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So what does this look like at GPC corporately? That's what we're here to talk about with our AGM today. And over the past year, we've been quite focused internally. So, well, past couple of years, 
We did our restructuring, we've had our refurbishing. Chris and I have been laying a solid biblical foundation in our teaching. And we feel that now it's a time that we've got those foundations in place to springboard off into our mission, to bring our focus from internal to external, okay? So we want to be doing everything we can to reach out. So to make sure that we are doing this, we need to be on board. We need a vision, right? We need to be able to actually articulate our vision and mission statements. So in order to do this, we've revised them a little bit to make it easier, okay? So if someone says to you, what are you all about at, at GPC? We can say, we are about this. So what our mission statement now says is that we are connecting, inviting, transforming, okay? Connecting with God, with each other, and with those in the community. We are inviting. We want to get inviting as part of our DNA. We are people who invite others to come to church, to events, and into a relationship with Jesus. So whichever of those invitations is right at the time, we are the people who will step out courageously and invite. And transforming. Uh, this part is what the Spirit does, uh, and we can help along with that. Um, that it's to be transformed, to be more like Jesus. So whilst we bring people into the church, into a relationship with God, and we pray for their transformation, and we aid that with all of the things that we do at GPC, um, we also benefit from God continually transforming ourselves and looking to the Spirit to be transformed alongside everybody else at GPC. And through that, we are transforming our community because more and more people come into the kingdom, more and more people believe in Jesus, and more and more people are taking that love back out there and making it a safer, more wonderful, godly community here where we live. That is our mission. So the question, what, what are we aiming for with this? What's our vision? And we've got a vision statement that's a little bit longer, and I'll let you look at that. It's on our website and our vision booklet. But just the short version today is we want to be a hub of hope. So this idea, it's, it's, it's like the image of a sort of beehive with people coming in and then going out again. And whether you see that as the church building or the church people, both included, okay? It's a, it's a holistic vision. And what we want is, is for people to come to us or come into our service to be refreshed, to be restored, to be healed, to be loved and nurtured, equipped, impassioned, all of those things. It's our refueling station, if you like. And then to go back out and take all of that to those people who do not know Jesus. And hopefully we have this beautiful inward, outward flow through our relationships, through our building, through all that we do at GPC. There will be people coming to us being refreshed, going back out, and hopefully bringing more and more people. In this way, it is like a hub, and I hope we're reminded of that when we look at those hexagons on our logo, that that is what we are aiming to be, a hub of hope, by connecting, inviting, and transforming. So this year, let's pray into those things. Let's embody those things. And let's ask Jesus to just help us go for it, to do those things, to carry out the work that he has started here in our community. So we can do this, GPC. I'm so excited. Uh, so keep those texts coming in. Um, and here's Chris to share about some practical things and ways in which we're going to do that in the coming year. Wow, what an inspiring sermon. Look, as Becky just mentioned, I want to lay out a few ways that in, over the next uh, year we're looking to shift our focus from uh, the internal things to outwards and to truly start to move forward as a unified church to fulfill the mission that God has upon, uh, that God has called us to fulfill. And the first place that this starts is with unity, making sure we're all on the same page, that we're all united as we move forwards together. And so the place that we're going to start by the, with this is by teaching uh, through a series in the first term uh, that we're going to back up with small group studies as well that are going to be complementary along 
alongside these studies. And we see this as a great way to start the year with uh, the same vision and the same purpose and all together uh, looking at and focusing on the same things. Also, uh, on small groups, uh, we're looking at having a new aspect to this ministry. Uh, we hope to have people volunteer for a short period of time uh, to lead interest groups where people can meet up over things uh, that they enjoy doing and things they have in common together. And we're hoping that this might be uh, a more attractive place to invite friends and family uh, who aren't connected into GPC or who aren't connected into a church at all. Uh, so that's really exciting for next year. The next thing that we're going to be doing over the next year is um, planning to have uh, to up our game, I guess, with regards to the creativity in our services, but also to be more practical and equipping. Uh, in our services, we want to spend more time uh, and give space for people to respond to what they've been hearing and uh, what they've been sensing God calling them into, and to let the Spirit really move uh, and transform uh, people's hearts and minds in, in, in the Sunday services. Um, and uh, that doesn't mean uh, things aren't going to be biblical. It doesn't mean we're going to step away from you know, the truths of the gospel and the truth that we see proclaimed in God's word. We just want to focus on, on the practical equipping uh, and, and meeting God uh, in that space. And so, look, this might mean things look a little bit different some, some Sundays, um, but we're just really excited uh, to see God equip and move in us to uh, equip us for that ministry that he's got for us. Uh, so our preaching will have an increased application, uh, and every now and then, as I've said, this might look a little bit different. God has prepared good works for us to do, uh, things that only you can do. The ministers can't do, other people, your friends, your family can't do them. God has works and uh, uh, plans prepared for you to fulfill, and we want to equip you and give you the tools so that you can truly and faithfully fulfill those plans for God. The next thing uh, we want to do is uh, look a bit more at outreach. Um, you know, we uh, do mission individually, and that's what we're getting equipped for in our services, but we also do it corporately as a church as well. And the beauty of church uh, is that we have ready resources. Uh, we have financial, physical, people resources to enable us to make a big difference in the community. Over the past couple of years, the way in which we've been involved uh, in caring and reaching out into the community, a number of those places have, uh, or opportunities have stopped, things like uh, the GI dinners. Well, helping the community has been on our hearts, and thankfully, uh, as we continue to look uh, to this, our partnerships committee uh, are engaging with outside uh, organizations. Uh, but after a recent consultation with the Presbytery Mission Enabler, uh, we uh, really felt the burden to get alongside uh, other people in the community who want to get out there and bless Glendowie. And uh, we've already got two ways in which we can do this uh, that are already lined up for next year that we believe will make a real difference in our community uh, as well as seeing us engage and form better relationships with people within the Glendowie community. And these two ways are firstly a community care day uh, and the second way is a community food co-op. All right, so the Community Care Day is something you've probably heard Becky speaking about. It's a one-off opportunity that we're organizing to get alongside other people in the community to help the less fortunate amongst us and to show them that we love and that we care about them as well as connecting with them. It's an awesome chance for connecting and inviting. And we hope that this is going to be a big event with lots of people involved. It's going to be an awesome initiative and it's relatively easy for volunteers to get involved with, but it's going to have a huge impact. So we're really excited about that. If you haven't signed up for it, uh, I really encourage you get in there, sign up for that and be a part of that when we eventually can actually get around to doing that when COVID restrictions lift. The other initiative that I've mentioned uh, that we're hoping to be a part of uh, gets off the ground soon is the Glendowie Community Food Co-op. And this is an initiative from a member of the community who works in establishing these co-ops uh, all throughout New Zealand. It's a place where the people of the community can buy food that is of better quality um, but also cheaper than a supermarket. And look, the PC has agreed for this food co-op to be based at our premises. Uh, don't worry, uh, it's just one day a week. But this will see many people from within the community 
come into our premises to work together to organize and to distribute food, chatting and connecting with one another in the process. The mission of the co-op is community connecting over food. And just by having this community co-op at GPC will help connect us with the community. But if we as a church community, um, if we get involved in this, if we take the opportunity to be a part of this, perhaps even being on the leadership team, we will truly um, have so many missional opportunities amongst the people of our community who will literally be coming to us. Uh, what a fantastic opportunity. It gets us closer uh, to our vision of being a hub for the community, of raising the presence of GPC and a profile within the community, with raising our influence in the community, as well as giving us the opportunity to connect and invite people to come and be a part of GPC, to come and hear the good news of Jesus. Jesus, should we get that opportunity? Uh, what a, a fantastic opportunity that's going to be. Well, as we press on with our mission, uh, we also have a building project team uh, who will be continuing with the feasibility and planning stage uh, of a full site plan for GPC. As we have discovered over the last two years, uh, the presbytery want us to investigate what a full site redevelopment would look like here at GPC to enable us to be more fit for purpose, to maximize our space and our property for the worship needs that we have, but also to be a place that's more engaged with the community, to become that hub of hope that we want to be. And so our, our practical um, need for this is for you to pray. Pray that those investigations go well. Pray that the, the planning and um, the people we're engaging with um, are truly led by God to uh, come up with a plan and uh, a design for our property that will truly see us uh, benefit the community for the good of the gospel, to see the gospel permeate throughout the Glendowie community. Well, uh, there's lots coming up over the next year. There's the usual events and things that we uh, do as part of our church year, uh, part of our church calendar. Uh, and so, look, the question is that you might be asking is, how can I help? How can I get involved? How can I be a part of this? Well, we're going to be giving our best as uh, ministers, Becky and me, um, but also the PC give their all um, and the leadership team, the elders, you know, they give their best for Glendowie and for the goals that we're hoping to achieve for the gospel. So what can you do? Firstly, sign up and get involved. We need volunteers to make things happen. And so at the start of next year, we're going to have a sign-up Sunday or a, an opportunity for everyone to sign up and be a part of um, a roster, uh, sign up for an event that will be coming up through the year, um, sign up to just do little tasks that might need doing around the church. Um, you know, we need you. Yeah, that poster, we need you. Um, to make everything happen at GPC. So please, don't stand back. Don't get be hands off. Get involved. Get stuck in. Sign up. Everyone and anyone with whatever personality you have uh, can find a place to get involved uh, and do your little bit. We need everyone to do their bit, uh, to do great things here and make GPC the awesome community that we know God's calling us to be for the kingdom. Well, the second area um, the, the second thing, should I say, that you can do. Um, it might sound a little strange, um, but it's a, an area that is so important, and that is communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. So much of our time uh, as a staff team um, is waiting around for people to reply to messages and emails, um, and only uh, often, sorry, and often only a small number of people do respond. Um, look, we do realize that everyone is busy. We realize that um, church is a voluntary organization um, and that people have busy lives with work. Um, but as Bex has said um, just before, you belong to something bigger than just your life. You're a part of God's mission and following Jesus. And this should be a priority in your life. This should come first. And so as me and Becky and all the staff team, Sarah, James and Shireen, uh, seek to facilitate this mission and move forwards together and effectively use our time, please respond to our emails. Please respond to messages. Please respond uh, to calls for rosters and, and things like that as quickly as you can. If we ask for information or feedback or, or anything that we might ask for, we really value that. 
Now, we don't ask for random things for no reason at all, but we do value people's input and your response. So please do respond as soon as you can. It does help us get things moving and keep things moving here at GPC. So sign up, uh, get involved, get stuck in for the year ahead, and please communicate with us quickly. We really appreciate all of this. We are really excited about what the next year of ministry has involved for each and every one of us here at GPC. We are so keen, so keen to get back into church, to gather together as God's people in Glendowie and worship Jesus, our Lord and Saviour together. But also to see every one of those seats filled, those brand new seats we've got waiting there, comfortable. We want to see them filled. We want to um, be able to get out there connecting with one another, we're connecting with others in the community, connecting with God, connecting with people, inviting people into church to come and hear the good news of Jesus and to see our lives and the lives of people within the community and the community of Glendowie transformed by God. So as we proclaim the good news of Jesus, we truly can become a hub, for, a hub of hope for the people of Glendowie and beyond. God bless.